Hello and welcome back to another higher mathematics video on differentiation. In today's video we are going to be talking about rates of change. So, so far in our differentiation topic we have talked about how to find the derivative when given a function or an expression of an equation and we have also talked about how to find the derivative with respect to particular variables. Now this is very important when it comes into talking about rates of change. Now rates of change is very important in areas such as applied mathematics or physics. In fact some of you who take physics might know that the rate of change can be used to find things such as the velocity which we will get into later in today's video. But simply put rate of change is simply just finding the derivative. So we would say that the derivative of a function describes its rate of change. So for example, if we have the derivative dy by dx, we would say that this is finding the rate of change in y with respect to x or at the point x. Now, as I mentioned, for those who are taking physics, you might know that the velocity is the rate of change in displacement, and this will be very important when it comes to doing a few examples in today's video. But if you don't take physics, don't worry, it's basically just differentiation. So let's go over what we mean about rate of change by doing a little example. Now, as I said, rate of change is literally just differentiation. It's just another way of describing it in a more applied term. So this example here says, given f of x equals 2x to the power of 5, find the rate of change of f when x equals 3. Now if I didn't mention this, find the rate of change of f thing, if I just said find f of x which equals 2x to the 5 when x equals 3, all you would simply do, if you remember from national 5, is substitute in the value 3 for x. So you would do 2 times 3 to the power of 5, which I'm not going to work out because I don't have a calculator. But in our case, we are asked to find the rate of change of f when x equals 3, and as I said, the rate of change is simply just finding the derivative. So the first step before we actually work with this when x equals 3 thing, we have to actually work out the rate of change. So that is simply just the derivative. As we said, the rate of change just means the derivative. So in this case, if you have checked up on our finding the derivative video, you will know that we just bring the power down to the front, multiply it by, multiply it by any constants, we'd get 10 x, subtract 1 from the power to give us 4. And now we want to find the rate of change when x equals 3. So in this case we're just going to find the rate of change when x is equal to 3. So this is the notation we do when we want to work it out. So we're simply going to do 10 times 3 to the power of 4. Now luckily for me I know that's just 10 times 81 which is going to give us 810. And we would say this is the rate of change of f when x is equal to 3. Now as I said in our finding the derivative video, the best way to practice working out or practice differentiation is just to do lots of examples. So we'll do one more example here so we can get our head around finding the derivative and then substituting in a value. So in this case, we are told given y equals the equation 1 over x to the power 2 over 3 for x not equal to 0, calculate the rate of change of y when x equals 8. Now we're asked to find the rate of change of y. So if you remember, that means we're going to be wanting to work out dy by dx. Now, in this case, we want to s simplify our y a little bit because we can't actually differentiate this just yet. We need to prepare to differentiate by making sure that we don't have any x's as the denominator 
of a fraction. Again, we mentioned this in our finding the derivative video. So in this case, we just change the power to be a negative power and we'll find that we're going to get y equals x to the minus two thirds. And now that we've prepared to differentiate, we can simply differentiate this by bringing the power down to the front, multiplying by x, and subtracting one from the power should give us minus five over two, uh, five over three, sorry. And here we're also going to change this to just have a positive power. So we'll change this to be minus two over three, and then x to the five over three. And I will also change this to involve a bit of a cube root. Um, as we can see, it's going to be minus two over three, and then it's the cube root of x, all to the power of five. So that's our rate of change of y. In other words, simply the derivative dy by dx. Now we want to work out at x equals eight. Now this time, because we've not got a function, we can't write f of eight. So we actually need to write so our examiner knows that we're working out at x equals eight. I'll put a little dot dot so they know that's what we're doing underneath. And here we're doing dy by dx, and anywhere you see an x, you just want to substitute an eight. Now, which one looks easiest to use? Probably our final answer. So I'll just do that over here. We're going to have minus two over three, and then cube root of eight, all to the power of five. Now we can simplify our answer a little bit. What's easier to do, eight to the power of five or the cube root of eight first? Well, the cube root of eight is just two. So we know this is going to be three times two to the power of five. We can simplify that up a little bit. Two to the power of five is going to give us 32. So we're going to be doing three times 32, which simply equals minus two over 96, and we can simplify that up a bit by getting minus one over 48, and this would be our final answer. So now that we've wrapped our heads around what we mean about rate of change and working out rates of change at particular points, we're going to start by talking about displacement, velocity, and acceleration, which are words you may have heard if you take physics, as I said earlier, but if you've not, don't worry. Displacement is basically just direction with, um, or distance with a direction. Velocity just means speed with a direction, and acceleration is, as you can imagine, just acceleration. Now we can define formulae using differentiation to help us work out the velocity and the acceleration and we're going to define them just now. So we're going to start off by saying that the velocity of an object, or we'll say the velocity, we'll give it the symbol v, so the symbol for velocity is just v, and we would say that the velocity of an object is defined as the rate of change of displacement. Now we give displacement the symbol S and we say with respect to time, which we give the symbol T. So let's see what we are actually doing here before we say what this uh, derivative is going to look like. So as you can see, we're saying that the velocity of an object is going to be the rate of change of displacement, s, with respect to time t. Now what did we say, for example, we said dy by dx, we said this was the rate of change of y with respect to x. So in this case we have 
the rate of change of displacement with respect to the time t. So we can create a formula which will look something like this. We've got the rate of change of displacement with respect to time t. And we call this velocity. Now let's take a look at what this actually means. Well, we're just saying that the velocity is how the displacement, which we said was just distance with a direction, with respect to time t. So it's how it changes with respect to time. And that's essentially what speed is, isn't it? Speed is just how the distance changes over time. But here, because we're talking about directions, we've got velocity is equal to the change in displacement divided by, the, with respect to the time, sorry, change of displacement with respect to time. Now with this, we can create a new formula as well, and we can say that also acceleration, so we're also going to do acceleration. We're also going to do a bit of a formula for acceleration, which we give the symbol A, and we say that it is defined as the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. And we'll create a little formula for this as well, which as you can imagine, because we're doing the rate of change of velocity with respect to time, we would say that our acceleration A is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. So you can see if you're asked to work out an acceleration, you must have the velocity. And if you're asked to work out the velocity, you must have the displacement and both of these terms displacement and velocity both these expressions will be in terms of t so we'll wrap up this video by doing a little example now i have taken this example from somewhere else so i've modified it a little but it is sort of the style of question you might find in the exam if we're talking about velocity displacement and acceleration so it says a ball is thrown so that its displacement s after t seconds is given by the function of displacement in terms of t which equals 23t minus 5t squared. So this time instead of an equation uh, say s equals 23t it's actually a function in terms of t and we are asked to find its velocity after two seconds. Then we are also asked to find the acceleration of the ball at time t. So to start off by finding the velocity after two seconds, as we set up here, the velocity is just the derivative of uh, displacement with respect to time. So we would say that the velocity, now because our displacement is in a function, we're going to find the velocity as a function. And we simply say this is the derivative of displacement. So let's work that out. Well, 23t with respect to t, when we find the derivative, it's just 23. And then minus 5t squared with respect to t is just going to be minus 10t. Now that will get you a mark for working out the velocity, but we are asked to find the velocity after two seconds. So we will say that after two seconds, well in this case we're just substituting in time to be 2. So anywhere we see a t we just substitute in 2. We're going to get 23 minus 10 times 2 and this is simply just going to give us 23 minus 20 which is just 3. So we would say the velocity after 2 seconds is going to be 3. Now one important thing we need to put is the units. So we're going to say after two seconds, the velocity, now for those that don't know, the units for velocity, because it is 
technically a vector, it's got direction. We would say that velocity um, is three and the units is meters per second. And if you need to visualize it, you can see it's displacement as a ratio, it's divided by time. So it's going to be meters per second because the unit for a displacement is meters, it's a distance, and time is measured in seconds. So the velocity is meters per second. Now we are asked to also find the acceleration of the ball at time t. So this time we've not got a specific value for the time, we're just um, asked to work at the acceleration. And as we said, acceleration at a time t is just equal to the derivative of the velocity at time t. Now we said our velocity is 23 minus 10 t. We would say the equation for the acceleration, the 23 just vanishes and the minus 10 t just becomes minus 10. So it technically is in terms of t, except this is t to the power of zero. So this is our equation of the acceleration at time t.